to talk about women and God and men and God. And I just thought, I like to come up with interesting titles. So I called it Plain Favorites, Favorites, because it's as though like, God's plain favorites, men and women. And, and you know, you might think, um, you know, see that that's kind of absurd. And maybe, you know, you don't think about God as a man or being a man or a woman or trans or whatever the case is doesn't really matter to God because God's not like that. Well, what I will say to you is, if that's the case, then never use the masculine pronoun for God. Stop using it. And try for a while using the feminine pronouns. Call, call, refer to God as a she and a her. Because if it doesn't matter that God's, you use he and you talk about mankind and God, he, God loves me and God, he wants me to do this and God, want, all that kind of stuff. Well, then you start saying she and see how that is and see how it feels. Um, but as it is, from my perspective as a sociologist, um, it would appear as though I, either God's playing favorites or... Um, Yeah, I, men have something. I don't know. Some. Um, let me talk about it. So here, um, let me let me start at this place. Um, so this is uh, Sharia law is code of conduct is a code is a code of conduct. Sharia law re references Islam and a co codes of conduct or a code of conduct for Muslims, okay? And Sharia law is this idea that in this book right here, the Quran, the Holy Quran, is what is necessary for human beings to live a good life and to live a moral life and to live an ethical life. And, and to live a life that would be the life that God and wants us, Allah wants us to live. Okay? And so the idea is that there are Muslims who take this book and they translate in the Quran. Do you, you, you know about the Quran, right? So can I like, be clear about a couple of things here? So first off, Muslims, Jews, and Christians all worship the same God. And um, the first five, the Torah for Jews, it's the first five books of the Old Testament, okay? The Old Testament is sometimes called the Hebrew Bible. So you, those of you who are Christians understand and you know and you know what that is, okay? The idea, for those who don't know, is that in the Old Testament, it's predicted that God is going to return to earth and God will send a savior or a Messiah who will then teach people to get on the right path, the righteous path, the straight path, as Muslims say. And so Christians have the idea that that, was, that person came in the form of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who was born a Jew, he died a Jew, he died thinking that he was Jewish, but over time he got turned into what we now refer to as a Christian. Okay? So Christians and Jews worship the exact same God. Muhammad comes along six centuries later and has revelations. And these revelations get turned in to the Quran. Muslims believe in the, the Jewish gods. Abraham is... Noah, all of the Jewish gods are the Jewish, I would say, um, patriarchs, I should say, not the Jewish gods, the Jewish patriarchs. All of them are in this book right here. Jesus is in this book right here. Jesus is probably mentioned more than anybody else in this book for Muslims. So for Muslims, Judaism is truth. Christianity is a higher truth. Because it's about the Messiah that came. But then Muhammad came, was the final Messiah. And that's the idea that Muslims have. Okay? So Muslims also have this idea that, hey, 
We can take this book right here and we can turn it into a code of conduct for human beings. Now, the problem with a code of conduct is things, codes of conduct get very, very complex because codes of conduct are obviously need to address a wide range of human behavior, not only in one place in the world, but every place in the world. In this book, this version right here is 464 pages long. And you understand it just in the United States alone, we have like 10 million laws on our books at different levels. So how are we going to adjudicate codes of conduct with this? It's very difficult, but yet people try, okay? Well, it's not just Islam. So Christianity, Christians have the same idea. Jews have the same idea of using the Torah to adjudicate codes of conduct among Jews. The difference with Jews is that Jewish people, it's, it's all based on the, the, the way that they kind of argue this out or they, they determine what is the right path is just through argumentation, and which is why really I feel like I, in my past life, I was born Jewish for sure. If I could be reincarnated, I would like to be Jewish because I just like that idea of, of, of arguing about a wide range of things. So listen, this is from Isaiah, right? So this is God. This is the word, a prophecy of God who's saying to people, okay, listen, go ahead. Go ahead and jump off the deep end and let me show you. Go down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of Chaldea, for you will no longer be called tender or delicate, right? Take millstones and grind flour, remove your veil, strip off your skirt, bare your thigh, and wade through the streams. This is God speaking to the people. Your nakedness will be uncovered and your shame will be exposed. And I, God, will take vengeance. I will spare no one. So lift your skirt so that we can see your thigh. Okay? Go ahead and do that. But just wait. Because I'm going to take vengeance. Like, oh, shit. Like, whoa. Okay, so women. Because if you're Christian, if you're Jewish, even if you're Muslim, it's like, so what do you do there, my friends? How do you decide what it is? Well, luckily, you got a bunch of Christians out there. They're going to help you out. So here it is. This, I pulled this from Christian websites. Now, you, you get an actual x-ray of a knee telling you the thigh begins right there. It's like, oh, thanks, man. So I got to decide whether I'm going to risk the vengeance of God, but I can just go to these Christian websites and like, they're going to hook me up, man. I'm good. I'll follow the website. I'm good. I can go right to here. It's all good. This is a biblical view on modesty and women's clothing. Right here, right here. Oh, it's, okay. So you got to deal with these curves because like women, you're going to have to deal with these curves in your bodies. So here it is. So you should wear a dress where we don't see your bum. Let, let it fall straight down. So see that? Okay. So we don't see your bum because men or other women, but let's just assume men or here. We don't want to see your breasts. We don't want to see them sticking out because that's like, that's, taunting and God's saying like hey man you're going to be uncovered that way because we're going to see your breast so you got to wear something that falls straight down so we don't see the underside of your curve see so Christians are on this stuff right so they're reading this thing here here's the Bible you got these people reading this and they're all interpreting it going like whoa we got to figure this out because this is God God is saying we're going to, oh man, I'm, I'm coming down. Like she's, she's really throwing down the gauntlet, y'all, right? If you take this stuff seriously, she, I'm just going to say God is a she, because why not, right? 
So she's going to throw down the gauntlet. So like, ah, oh, damn. So now you got all these Christians who are going to like try to figure this out. And they're going to start arguing over it. They're going to decide, well, what does that mean, the thigh? So these people think like, oh, well, that, it means this right here. And other people say, ah, oh, no, that's like, they, they, we're not taking, obviously, since many of you are Christians, if I, I, you know, I was downtown at like midnight a couple weeks ago, and I watched all these Christian, presumably mostly Christian women walking around like, oh, damn, man. I'm like, I had to avert, I would, yeah, I'm like, I'm an old man, you know what I mean? Like, I can't, like, I, I'm just trying to be like this. I'm like, damn. Clearly, all of these Christian women who are half naked aren't reading this verse, or they've just interpreted it in a different way. And so what happens is that Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, it doesn't matter. We get these holy texts, and whoever has the pulpit, whoever has the microphone, as I do right now, we just decide what that means. So you all here at Penn State just decide, yeah, we can wear these shorts, cut off shorts, like right up halfway up our butt. Like, okay, that's cool. And I can still be a Christian and I can do that. But other people are going like, damn, like, oh, that's not very Christian. You can't do that. But you've decided you can because you read this all differently. And same with Muslims in the Quran. Everyone just, just decides differently. It just depends on who you are and where you are and how you want to do it. And you all make that decision. Okay? Okay.